My name is Susie Thortson Wasden. I was born in 1949, which makes me 65 years old. I was born in Spirit Lake, Iowa, and I now reside in historic Cocoa Village, Florida. I had a great childhood. Growing up in Spirit Lake, Iowa was pretty cold, but my father was a mailman, my mother worked, and of course back in the 50s most mothers didn't work, but it took both incomes to keep the family going. We were very active in school activities, sports, summer activities. It was a lake area, so boating was really fun. We had we skied um, in the summers. We uh, most of my friends were quite wealthy, and they had two homes, which is unheard of. We lived in town, and then in the summer, all my friends lived on the lake. So it was really really exciting, and and it. Um, I think was a good background. My parents had a great, great work ethic. Um, seeing both parents work was, was kind of unusual because most of my friends that wasn't the case. So we had limited resources, but I think altogether we, we were a pretty fun family and we, we were um, uh, cold a lot because it was 25 below. My father delivered mail. Um, 22 miles a day and sometimes weather of 25 degrees below. Um, school was uh, very uh, small classes. We, it was a small town. There were only 1,200 people that lived in my town. And so there, you knew everyone, you knew all the merchants, you knew everybody. We had a party line, you know, nobody really even knows what a party line is, but we had that. And so my neighbor's mother was the operator. So we get on the phone, you couldn't get away with anything because everybody in town knew what you were saying. So it was, it, it, it was different, but like I said, I, it, it, I didn't know any different. We came as, as a result of, we were snowed in, and we were, had a little black and white television, and we watched Walter Cronkite, and we watched the TV, and they were starting to launch missiles in Cocoa Beach, and it was in January, and we saw all of these people on the beach, in Cocoa Beach, in bathing suits, and we had been snowed in for four or five days. And so the thought that we would go there was, it was a miracle. So the next summer, we made a trip and we decided that we got to see Florida. And we all as a family decided we want to move there. So we did. Teacher, because back then women didn't do business. You were a nurse or a teacher. And I wasn't a, I was a good student, but I wasn't one of those math, science kind of students. And so I thought, well, I, I thought I might even like to be a lawyer. And then I found out it was, I think, seven years of school. I said, well, that's not going to work. So teaching was a good option. And, you know, where, when we grew up in a small community, teaching was a very respected um, profession. The part that I didn't really understand is that teachers really don't make a lot of money. So after graduating, I moved to Atlanta, and I had to work two jobs there. So I've worked almost my whole life. And then I said, you know, I'm working way too hard. I'm not making enough money. I really think at some point I need to change careers. I had, that I had great students, but what I found to be unfortunate, the, the lower level students got plenty of attention, the gifted got plenty of attention, the middle class that didn't cause any trouble got no attention. So I spent a great deal of time, I didn't worry about the gifted, because they would do just fine. And the lower ch um, academic children I had to spend a great deal of time with more than the rest of them. So 
it, it was what I probably remember the most is working with this, the special education children. And they would get in trouble, but I, I remember seeing them and, and they couldn't wait to come to school and they couldn't wait for me to spend time with them. And so I, I do remember, a, 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 well, I, I do remember one, his name was Ralph, and uh, he, would, he would always want to sit with me. And so his mom told me that, that Ralph just can't wait to come to school and he never liked school before. So I do remember Ralph. And then when I did my student teaching in Gainesville, I had fallen off my bicycle and I had kindergartners. And, and I had my knee all wrapped up and I was reading to the children and I said, now, Miss Thornton has a bad knee, so be very careful. So I start reading the story, and I remember Renavia Washington took her fist and punched my knee. <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness, I thought I was going to go through the roof. But I do remember her because she, she was so sweet. We, we didn't have a break from the time we got to school. And I taught music. They didn't have a music teacher. I taught art. They didn't have an art teacher. And I taught PE and taught them how to play baseball. And because we didn't have special teachers, you taught everything. So it was, it was a hard job for, I think I made $8,700 a year. I think that was my salary. I never broke 10000 in teaching. There'd be three or four of us in a two-bedroom. And we could barely pay that. So I'm, I, I don't even remember the dollar amount, but I suspect out of my $300 check that I got, I had to make a car payment, had to pay part of my medical, um, had to pay rent, gas, and that really $300 a month didn't pay that. I, my portion of the rent was probably $130 maybe. One, and then all summer I worked. That was the great thing about teaching. I worked full time and so, my roommate talked me into charging a bathing suit at, um, I think it was Rich's department store in Atlanta, Georgia. That's what was there. And I think the bathing suit was $6 or something. It took me four months to pay it off. <laughs> and I never charged another thing. I mean, I just never did charge cards. Today, these young people, they, they charge everything and they think nothing of not paying. So. I, and that's part of the, the work ethic, I think, that I got at home because my parents, there was never quite enough, so you had to watch every penny. I watched them work. I worked. Um, everybody worked. Well, it's amazing because um, even though we had very little we learned in Iowa and here we were always involved with the church. We grew up Methodist in Iowa as well as Cocoa Beach. My father was an usher. I was the president of MYF. You know, I, I was always giving and saving um, even when I was really young. So it's, it's really a, a, a blessing to be able to, to give to so many organizations and to to be effective in raising money for numerous organizations. I think Tom asked me one about a year ago, he said, how many fundraisers did you do last year? And I said, oh, not very many. I think maybe seven or eight. He says, well, let's, let's talk about that further. Let's, let's write them down. Tom's a goal person, a planner. Um, okay, let's write them down. Well, by the time we finished writing them down, I was involved in 19 fundraisers in a 12-month period. It's not only do I like to, to give money, I like to help organizations raise money. And that's kind of our philosophy. We, li we like to give money in our community, even though we do other things outside of the community. Um, we like to give money where we can see that we've made a difference. So that's kind of how we choose what our philanthropic um, things are is is I like I like the organization I like the people running it I want to help young women I want everyone to have the opportunity to be the best they can 
So we fit ourselves with these kinds of organizations. So it, it really is great. We, I like giving money away. I really do. It doesn't, Tom will come in and say, oh, I met these people, they, they were just great, you know, what can we do for them? And I said, let's take a look and let's see what we can do. And we, um, we do that every year. And it's, it's, it's an honor because there was a time, you know, when you're teaching, you get your check in the mid-December and then they pay you for January. So you don't get another paycheck till February. So we would come back after the Christmas vacation I mean, we were into eating beans. I mean, chili in a can. I mean, out of money, because we had to do our vacation for the holiday. We had to do gifts and travel and whatever. This just wasn't enough money. So to, to have almost not enough for such a long period in my life, I don't have that issue anymore. So I still don't spend a lot. Tom will tell you that she doesn't really spend a lot. that I, we both pass on to them is, is that you can do, you can be anything you want, you can be anything you'd like to be, but it takes a lot of work. You need to set your goals, you need to have a plan, um, and again, that work ethic. I, I work now probably more than some of my grandchildren, but the good news is they, they have a strong background from, I think, my side of the family as well as Tom's side of the family. And I think that they listen. But what, what was interesting, I've known these children since they were born, and one just a couple years ago, one of the older granddaughters said, Grandma, do you work? And that's when I realized, because they, they, don't, they don't really know us. And so Tom says, we're going to make a change there. So they've gotten a book and they didn't know half, they didn't know half of what we were all about. So it's, it's important to, to leave a legacy, to leave a, a strong legacy so that their children and the next generation and the next generation. So we, we have done that with this book that was released, but I, th I think it's important that, that the children really know their grandparents. Um, I knew my grandparents very well because every holiday was with the grandparents. That's not true today because they have the in-laws and the other laws and, you know, they, they, they're they always moving and it's not always around us. So we have a tradition that we have Thanksgiving here every day, or every year, excuse me, and we've never missed. And they all come. So it's something that... and that is really fun for us to see them and we have a we all dine together and laugh together and they of course they love coming to the space coast because of the beaches and they love coming so we'll continue to do that and the i guess we can say the rest is history we'll see